Welcome to Blog or Die, the Texan PL660 versus PL880. I've owned my Texan PL660 since 2011. That's 12 years ago. It's not the newest version of that radio. There have been firmware updates since then, but it works well and is arguably the best radio I own. More recently, the antenna started to pull apart from wear, but an OEM replacement was easy to find and easy to install. Now the radio looks and works good as new. The screen protector is still on the display. But I like to try new things, and I ordered a Texan PL880 from Kaito USA on eBay. I say new, but this radio has been on sale for almost 10 years. The PL880, like its predecessor, is a phase-locked loop synthesized analog tuned radio with digital display. The PL660 is a dual conversion superheterodyne radio, and the PL880 is a triple conversion superhet. Unlike the PL660, the PL880 employs a digital signal processor for decoding signals and controlling bandwidth. The PL660 has two bandwidth settings, wide and narrow, compared with the PL880 that has four values, 9, 5, 3.5 3.5 and 2.5 kilohertz for AM, and five options, 4, 3, 2.3, 1.2, .3, and 0.5 kilohertz for SSB. The two radios are operationally very similar, but there are some features of the PL660 that are missing from the PL880, specifically airband and synchronous tuning. More on that below. The PL880 adds 1150 additional ATS memories, 12 pages times 100 memory presets, an extra 50 on page 0, but less the airband presets, a separate fine tuning control, a dial light switch, and a line out audio jack. The PL880 gives specific signal strength and noise numbers, while the PL660 has a 0 to 5 graphic scale that's almost always on 5. The PL880 adds seconds to the clock display, and it has the ability to sort and remove duplicate station presets. Later models of the PL660 have this, but not mine. The PL880 has a line-out jack for recording. The listener can hear the station on the speaker while recording cable is plugged in the jack. Synchronous tuning is perhaps a good place to start when talking about hidden features. The PL880 has a user's manual that documents how to use it, but the radio has features not in the manual. Figuring out these features is somewhat of an internet cottage industry, and not everyone agrees on what they are. The PL660 has synchronous detection, a technique for receiving part of the radio signal when the other part is distorted for one reason or another. The PL660 synchronous detection is rated highly, the PL880 doesn't have this feature, according to the manual. However, it does exist as a hidden feature and reportedly works poorly. Sucks is a word one sees to describe it. There are other hidden features, for example, frequency calibration that work very well and are a great advantage. The digital noise reduction feature is the cause of debate, and we'll just have to see how that one works. One welcome undocumented feature is the ability to use the external antenna jack for MW reception. However, the process for invoking it is amazingly complicated, much more convoluted than it is to invoke the feature on the PL330. There is a setting for FM pre-emphasis, a U.S. versus Europe difference. One hidden feature that could be of interest is the ability to display the manufacture date and firmware version but reportedly the former feature has been removed and the firmware version display isn't being updated. My radio comes from Kaito USA, the Texan distributor in the U.S., so I was relatively confident that I would get the latest version. And indeed, the tamper-resistant seal on the box says 2023, the battery was labeled 2023, and the serial number underneath the kickstand has the string 202302, suggesting that the radio was made in February of 2023. The PL660 comes with an AC power adapter to charge its four AA batteries, 
while the PL880's 1650 battery can be charged with a mini USB cable. One obvious user upgrade to the PL880 is switching to a higher capacity battery. Both radios have an alarm feature, snooze timer, tone switch, sensitivity switch, DX normal, local, earphone jack, external antenna jack, display light, variable medium wave tuning step, kickstand, auto tune storage, ATS, FM stereo reception via earphones, and single sideband reception. The PL880 adds the ability to disable the automatic shutoff of the display light and substitutes a fine tuning control for the BFO in the PL660. I don't really remember what came in the PL660 box 12 years ago. I know there was a radio, a fold over flap carrying pouch, and a very professional looking manual from Kaito USA. It had an AC adapter to supply 6 volts for charging, earbuds, and I think a Texan reel antenna like the AN80. There is an indentation in the packaging that would fit that antenna. The PL880 is packaged very similarly. It includes the radio, a leatherette plastic zipper case, a Texan AN06 external antenna, an AC to USB mini power supply, a USB-A to USB mini charging cable, earbuds, a 2000 milliamp hour 18650 rechargeable battery, a station logging booklet, a professional looking manual from Kaito USA, a warranty card, and the biggest quick start sheet I have ever seen. There is a world map with amateur radio call sign prefixes on the back. Conventional wisdom is that the PL660 is the more sensitive receiver but that's offset by the multiple bandwidth options on the PL880, and the PL880 has better audio. Both are very good radios, and differences will be subtle. Both radios have relatively long telescopic antennas, but the one on the PL880 is a bit longer, 38.75 inches, compared to 35 inches for the PL660. Folded up, both antennas are the same size, so the extra length on the PL880 comes from it having more segments, and to get more segments within the same 7.9 millimeter diameter, the segments have to be thinner. Indeed, the topmost segments of the PL880 are very thin indeed, so take care not to bend it, and be warned that the antenna is unusually stiff to collapse. I ran my usual outdoor daytime band scans on the PL880 and reconfirmed prior results for the PL660. In the medium wave scans, the radio is facing southeast, the general direction of most stations. I don't turn the radio for best reception, but compare all radios oriented the same for consistency. The FM scans all use the radio's fully extended telescopic antenna. The PL660 blew away all challengers on FM up until now, but the PL880 forged into new territory, receiving 80 stations. Just wow. Performance on medium wave was the same. In my initial test of around 60 stations at 0300 UTC in Central Virginia with an MLA 30 plus antenna, I found the radios very similar in sensitivity with maybe a slight edge in favor of the PL660. It's hard to tell, as conditions vary from minute to minute, and the difference in speakers affects the listening in addition to differences in radio sensitivity. The PL880 has a markedly superior speaker and was much more pleasant to listen to. More on that below. One of my favorite test stations is CFRX. 6070 kilohertz in Toronto, Canada. It rebroadcasts the contents of medium wave station CFRB. It's not a strong station here in Virginia, but it is a consistent one, audible at some level day and night. I gave it a shot in the afternoon outdoors with the telescopic antenna on the two radios. I got similar results, keeping in mind that conditions change from minute to minute on shortwave.
Some radios, including these two, benefit from a ground connection when using a long wire antenna. A ground connection can make the difference between hearing a weak signal and nothing at all. The ground is connected to the shield of the 3.5 mm external antenna plug. Audio performance is one area where there's a clear difference. The PL880 has an awesome speaker, although limited to 450 milliwatts. I have $35 radios with more power, but the PL880 sound is the best of any portable I own. Here's a video with the two radios receiving Radio Algerien just before midnight local time, 0400 UTC, on 13790 kHz with an MLA 30 plus antenna here in central Virginia. The tone control was set to treble on both radios. The PL660 was set to narrow bandwidth and the PL880 was set to 3.5 kHz. One of my test stations is WWV. In addition to ticks and tones, WWV also includes low frequency content. The NIST website says, WWV and WWVH continuously broadcast a binary coded decimal time code on a 100 hertz subcarrier. The time code presents UTC information in a serial fashion at a rate of one pulse per second. One can perhaps hear the modulation of the 100 Hz subcarrier as a little buzz, but on the PL880 you can feel the subcarrier as a vibration of the radio. You can't feel it on the PL660. I'm going to cover single sideband in a separate video, comparing not only these two radios, but also the Texan PL330, XH Data D808, Eton Elite Executive, and the RTL SDR blog dongle with SDR Sharp software. Both of them did quite well in my first round of testing. The two radios have a different approach to single sideband detection. The PL660 uses a beat frequency oscillator, or BFO, to generate the missing carrier wave and second sideband. The mixture is then decoded in the same way an AM signal is processed. The PL660 tunes to the precision of 1 kHz, and the BFO control makes up for any smaller frequency step. By contrast, the PL880 uses a digital signal processing chip to decode single sideband. This radio tunes to a precision of 10 Hz on SSB, and that precision is what clarifies the signal rather than adjusting the BFO frequency separately. I found the calibration on my old PL660 to be dead on. The BFO knob has a detent to show its center position, and in almost every case that setting was optimal, or just a hair off from optimal. I listened to ham radio operators on lower sideband at 7140 kHz. The problem I encountered was that the BF knob was too sensitive, with the smallest turn I could make overshooting the optimum sound. When it was set correctly, the clarity of the signal was outstanding. I'm still trying to make sure I have the best calibration for SSB on the PL880. My first impression, and that may be correct, is that the radio arrived perfectly calibrated already. In any case, when the radio is calibrated correctly, SSB tuning is trivial. Just set the frequency and pick the sideband. The problem I have with SSB stems from, the, from inexperience and from not knowing which way to turn the knob to improve clarity, and not knowing what exactly right sounds like. 
Exactly right seems to vary from radio to radio. I get the impression that ham radio operators are very picky about how their signals sound, and perhaps some of the negative comments about the PL-880 are based on comparisons with serious ham radios that are beyond my experience. In any case, the PL-880 works fine on single sideband, and it is pleasant to listen to. The PL-660 has a total of 2,000 station preset memories, organized in 13 pages. Page 0 is unique, with 100 memory locations dedicated to each band, FM, medium wave, long wave, air, and 200 each for short wave and single sideband. The remaining 12 pages can store 100 stations each from any band. The PL-880 expands the second group of pages to 24 and increases the number of shortwave slots on page 0 to 250, but of course drops airband for a total of 3,050 presets. Such a big number seems like overkill, but if the user wanted to simulate the enhanced tuning mode, ETM Plus, memory scans on other radios such as the PL-330 with separate memories for each hour of the day, then 20 four pages is exactly what one would need. Automatic tuning on the PL-880 is clearly superior. I connected my MLA-30 Plus antenna to both radios and did a full band scan on shortwave. The PL-880 stored 69 stations. The PL-660 got to 100, somewhere around 9 MHz, and stopped without finishing when the page filled up. Many, if not most, of the stored frequencies were just noise. By contrast, virtually all were real stations on the PL-880 scan. The PL-660 might perhaps work better in a less noisy environment, but it was next to useless when I tried it. Page Zero has more shortwave stations available, 200 to be specific. I reran the ATS scan, and the PL-660 filled them all up at around 12 MHz and quit again. According to Wikipedia, in electronics, a synchronous detector is a device that recovers information from a modulated signal by mixing the signal with a replica of the unmodulated carrier. This can be locally generated at the receiver using a phase-locked loop or other techniques. The Texan PL-660 has the feature and it is reputed to work quite well. I've tried it on occasion and found that it improves reception of some marginal signals. For synchronous detection to work, the radio must be able to generate a precise local unmodulated carrier and synchronize it with the incoming radio signal. It only works well when the local signal is locked on to the receiving signal. The PL-880 does not have a documented synchronous detection feature, but there is a sync indicator glyph on the display, and that indicator can be turned on with a long press of either the USB or LSB buttons. People say it doesn't work well and it doesn't lock on. I didn't find it helped anything. With that said, it's unfair to say that a feature doesn't work well when Texan never claimed to have the feature in the first place. Usability is a personal viewpoint, and I prefer the PL-880 operation over the PL-660. One significant improvement is the buttons. I often misfire when entering frequencies on the PL-660, and on the PL-330 for that matter, I either don't push the button hard enough, or I am too fast or too slow. It's annoying to have to re-enter the frequency two or more times. I don't find this to be an issue with the PL-880, perhaps because of its larger buttons that make a distinct click when activated. There's a great deal of similarity between the PL-660 and the PL-880 in terms of how to do things. The buttons are pretty much the same, and the radios work the same way. The big difference that I like very much on the PL-880 is its fine-tuning knob. The PL-660 has one knob that either turns fast, turns slow, or automatically switches between them depending on how fast the knob is turned. Switching between modes is tedious. The PL-880's separate fine-tuning knob makes it trivial to go back and forth between 5 kHz and 1 kHz, or 1 kHz and 10 kHz on SSB. They work the way you need them to work without having to set anything. I personally like the 18650 battery system that can be recharged through a USB cable. It's a huge convenience not to have to track down an AC adapter to charge the radio or switch batteries and load them into a charger. I'll probably never have to open the battery compartment again. It is a negative this late in the game that the USB port is a mini instead of a Type-C. 
but I have a box full of cables in addition to the one that came with the radio. The line out jack is very helpful for recording, not so much because of its lower level, but because you can continue to listen to the radio when it's plugged in. Another welcome addition to the PL880 is a light switch. In addition to automatic display lights when pressing buttons or turning knobs that go off after a few seconds, the switch lets the user choose for it to remain on. The PL660 turns on automatically, but only briefly, a very inconvenient event when making a video of the radio at night. The Texan PL880 is an excellent radio, but it's not a replacement for the PL660. The PL880 has a great speaker for listening to music, plus a line-out jack. It has some added operational convenience. It has more ATS memories. It has a separate fine-tuning control, but it doesn't receive more stations. It doesn't have airband, and it doesn't have a working synchronous detection. If I were stranded on a desert island with a solar panel and just one radio, I suppose I'd pick the PL880 because of its convenience and pleasing audio. But the PL660 would work about as well, if I could get 6 volts out of the solar panel.